So today we're going to talk about using the Pythagorean theorem to find a missing side length. By the end of this video, your lesson objective is I can apply the Pythagorean theorem to determine unknown side lengths in triangles. All right, let's go over some quick vocabulary. These are all words that you've seen before or that we've talked about, but I want to remind you of what they are. Okay, the hypotenuse of a triangle is the longest side. It's also across from the right angle. So, the hypotenuse is right here on this triangle. It is clearly the longest side, and it's across from the right angle. So, our next word is leg, and there are always two of them in a right triangle. They join at the right angle. And we usually call these like A and B, and we call the hypotenuse C. All right, and the last vocabulary is Pythagorean theorem. You need to have this written somewhere where you can get to it very quickly. What it means is that if I add the square of one leg to the square of the third leg, or third leg, sorry, second leg, I can find the hypotenuse. Here's the important part of this um, equation. I can have, as long as I have two parts of this equation, as long as I have an A squared or a B or a C, and I can put them into the equation, I can find the side that's missing. So how do I go about doing that? How do I use the Pythagorean theorem to find a missing side length of a right triangle? Well, there's some steps. The first steps, so we're going to go through those steps, and I'm going to teach you how to find a missing side length. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to label the legs and the hypotenuse with A, B, and C appropriately. So let's look at our right triangle here. We look for the right angle, okay, and the easy one for me is always the hypotenuse. It's across from the right angle, so I'm going to make it C, all right? Then I need to label my legs. Does it matter which leg is which? It does not. I'm going to label this A and this B. So that's step one. I've done it. Now you're going to plug the given information into the Pythagorean theorem. Well, if I remember right, my Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I have a and b, so I'm going to plug that information in. I'm going to use a different color. So I'm going to plug it in. I have a, which is 9 squared, plus b, which is 8 squared, equals C squared. I don't have C, so that's what I'm going to solve for. So I just actually go through and solve this. 9 squared is 81, because that means 9 times 9. 8 squared is 64. And then I just leave the C squared alone for right now. Now I'm going to add together my two numbers, 81 and 64, and I get 145 equals C squared. Here's the part that's a little different than what you're used to for equations. I don't want to know what c squared is. I want to know what c is. So remember, I'm going to do the same thing to both sides. Well, I know that the opposite of a squared is its square root. So I'm going to take the square root of both of these numbers. Use the square root key on your calculator. So the square root of c squared is just plain old c, okay, because that's the opposite. And the square root of 145 is 12.0 something, something, something. And I'm going to round to the nearest tenth. When I do that, I get 12. Once we go through all these steps, it's not really hard as long as you plug everything into the right place. So let's look at the next one. Step one, label the legs and hypotenuse A, B, and C appropriately. That's what I'm going to do first. Well, I see that this, the hypotenuse is across from the right angle, so that's C. 
and then I can name my legs A and B, no matter, you know, whichever one I want to. So I'm going to call this side A and this side B. So what I have is my B and my C, and now I'm going to plug those into my Pythagorean theorem. I don't have A, so I'm going to leave it A squared, but I do have B, that's 11 squared, and I do have C, which is 17 squared. So A squared plus 121, now I'm going to solve, oops, sorry, I did step two, plugged in the information, now I'm going to solve for the missing length. And then I have 17 squared, 17 squared is? 289. This is just like a normal equation. I need to move all the numbers to one side. So to solve this equation, I'm going to subtract 121 from both sides. And I end up with a squared equals 168. Remember, I don't want to know what a squared is. I want to know what a is. So use the square root because that's the opposite of squared and I get A equals, and when I round my number, it's 12.96, when I round it to the nearest tenth, I get 13. So here's what this means. The hypotenuse is 17, one leg is 11, and the other leg is 13. So now I have all of the side lengths of my triangle. Okay, so let's look at this triangle. You're gonna find the missing leg. My first step is to label. Across from my 90 degree angle is my hypotenuse, that's always my C. And then I can name my legs A and B however I want. I'm going to call this A and this B. My second step is to plug it into the Pythagorean theorem. I always write my Pythagorean theorem out so I make sure I'm plugging things into the right place. I have A, that's 6 squared. I do not have B. And I have C, which is 11 squared. So I have 36 plus b squared equals 121. Can I use my calculator to find these squares? Absolutely. Now this is just like a normal equation. Subtract 36 from both sides, and I get b squared equals 85. I find the square root because I don't want b squared, I want b, and I get b equals 9.2. So one leg is 6, the other leg is 9.2, and the hypotenuse is 11. All right, so this triangle has both legs, but not the hypotenuse. Follow the steps for finding the missing side length and see if you can do this all by yourself. Okay, so let's see how you did. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to label our triangle with A, B, and C. I know my hypotenuse is over here, and it's always C. This is a one leg. This is the other leg. If you, if you labeled your legs the other direction, like you made 10B and 12A, it doesn't really matter. The legs don't matter. The hypotenuse does, okay? So my Pythagorean theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I have A squared, or I have A, which is 10 squared. I have B, which is 12 squared, but I don't have C. So now it's 100 plus 144 equals C squared. I add these together because they're like terms. 244 equals C squared. I don't want C squared, so I have to find the square root of both sides. So C equals... 15.6 when I round to the nearest tenth. All right, let's try one more all by yourself. So pause the video, come back and check and see how you did. Okay, so this triangle is kind of upside down. So when you label it, you really have to look for your 90 degree angle. I'm going to label it. I see that my the line across from my 90 degree angle is my hypotenuse, and then each of the others is a leg. I'm going to label this A and this B. Now I'm going to plug it in, plug it in. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So much of algebra is just that, plugging in the information you know. 
All right, so 4 squared plus 9 squared equals c squared. 16 plus 81 equals c squared. Okay, add these together and I get 97 equals c squared. And now I find the square root. That's my very last step. c equals 9.8. Hopefully you didn't have any trouble. I think the, the hardest part of the Pythagorean theorem is remembering what are the legs and what's the hypotenuse and what am I trying to find. Um, write down any questions you might have and we'll be doing some work on this tomorrow.